My neighbors had a mailbox post that was rotting and falling over. I offered to share my metal mailbox post by converting the single mount into a double mount. I would do this by designing and welding a double mount mailbox bracket. I would then nest the shaft into the square tubing on which the current box is mounted. It's just like a receiver hitch on a truck. To do this, I first had to remove the end cap with a hammer. These are usually tack welded into place. Mine was already loose. This reveals a three inch opening as a receiver. Next, I found a piece of square tubing that would serve as the bracket's shaft, which would fit in the opening. It was a loose fit, but shims could be put into place later on. I began by taking measurements of each component and noted how they are positioned in relationship to each other. This includes the mounting board and how much overhang exists from the mount. I created a design that I drew up using inexpensive design software. This is a rough design that I loosely followed from which I occasionally strayed. I questioned whether the angled supports were necessary. I initially decided I would omit them because I thought it was overkill. I found out later, however, that these do need to be included, which I'll address later. The following are the materials I used. The two and a half inch square tubing will be used as the receiver shaft. It is approximately six inches long. The two 14 inch angle iron pieces will be the left and right mailbox mounts. And the 26 inch angle iron piece will be the front spanning support. I began with a 26 inch piece laying it on a 2x4 for easy handling. I first found the center and marked 5 inches on each side in order to create a 10 inch span. This will be the space between the mailboxes. Then I marked 5.5 inches from these markings on each side to represent the center of the mailboxes. This will position each mailbox to overhang the ends. This will help maintain a low profile bracket, hiding the ends when viewed from the sides. Then I clamped the left and right mailbox mounts in this manner, centering them where the middle of the mailboxes will be positioned. I then flipped it over and squared the pieces using a speed square. Once square, I tacked the pieces together using my MIG welder. Then, I rechecked for square and finished my welds on all the joints. I followed by grinding smooth any protruding beads. Next, I measured and mapped out where my mounting holes would be drilled. Giving them a wide spread would assure the best stability. Using a drill press, I worked the bit sizes up to holes that would easily receive a 5 16th inch bolt. Then I positioned the bracket in this manner and marked the center to where I had attached the shaft. I decided to place a thick washer down, acting as a spacer for the shaft. I decided that it would look and fit better if the bracket cupped the receiving end rather than butt up to it. The tubing was prepped for welding, clamped into position on the spacer, and squared. All the joints were welded and the spacer was knocked out using a hammer and a screwdriver. Then I tacked on a couple washers that would act as shims for a more snug fit in the receiver. The bracket was now ready to test for fit. I removed the mounting screws in this manner around the bottom perimeter of the mailbox. Then the mailbox was lifted off to expose the screws securing the mounting board. These screws were removed and the board was then lifted from the post mount. The bracket was installed and inspected for possible adjustments. Clamped into place, I used a drill through the existing holes to mark the shaft for drilling at the shop. I prefer using my drill press on such thick steel. These are the holes that will later receive the screws that secure the bracket. 
I work the bit sizes up to a 3 16 inch bit, which will accommodate the size screws I plan to use. This is the point where I felt like the bracket was complete. I then hung it up and put some coats of primer on it, and then later finished with black implement paint. Once the paint was cured, the mounting boards were installed. My neighbor supplied these. They were cut from one by pine or poplar to the proper size and painted for weatherproofing. Using a T-square, I mapped the center placement of the mounting bracket on both boards. Then I mapped the ends for overhang. Next, I placed the bracket on the boards in this manner, making sure the pieces were square before clamping. 5 16 inch holes were drilled in the boards through the existing holes in the bracket. The whole unit was then flipped over to position for hardware installation. Here's the hardware that I used. Carriage bolts were placed in each hole in this manner. The carriage bolts were then set into place using a hammer. Once in place, the unit was once again flipped over where each bolt received a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut. The nuts were hand threaded and then tightened using a socket wrench. Flipping it over again, the boards were now ready for the mailboxes. Each mailbox was installed on the mounting boards and secured with screws around the bottom perimeter. One and a half inch exterior deck screws was my choice of hardware. Once both mailboxes were installed on the mounting boards, the whole unit was ready to be placed on the post. At the post, I slid into place until the holes were in line. I secured using self-drilling metal screws. The boxes and bracket looked good. However, when I went to open and close the doors, I noticed the boxes were bouncing. I knew I had made a mistake of leaving out the angled supports. I returned the unit to the shop and added the much needed angles that I originally had in my plan. This solved the bouncing issue and definitely made a solid final product. The mailboxes were now ready to use.